The recent outbreak of 2019 NCOV, otherwise known as coronavirus, has been all over the news lately. It has caused widespread death. I mean, it's put people out there staying at their homes. It's also been affecting recently tech. Now, I know when you say that you're like, Justin, how does a, a health virus, you know, a medical issue, something that's been deemed a global health emergency, affect the world of tech? Well, it has caused companies like Apple and Amazon and countless others to have to close their facilities over in China. Uh, that's caused problems and scares with global supply chains and that can affect the economy. So there are a lot of things happening currently that are a big issue and that's specifically affecting the world of tech. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to highlight the ways that tech is doing good things despite the virus and even helping to fight against the virus. So these are the ways that tech is fighting against the coronavirus. And I apologize in advance if I mispronounce some of the words, especially for like the towns and the companies. Um, I, of course, don't speak Chinese, but nonetheless, I just want to apologize in advance. So as I'm sure you've read in articles and possibly seen on the news, there are countless people stuck at their homes because of the virus. They're not able to leave. Schools are closed. Places are just closed as everything's on lockdown. They're trying their best not to spread the virus any worse than it's already been. Because of that, people are using tech in a way to help adapt to their homebound living. One of those ways is contactless delivery. So there are companies out there that are delivering food and goods to people without actually having to make contact with them. Food companies, there's a company called Muatan, and there's even food places like KFC and Pizza Hut that are trying to deliver their food to designated cupboards in the area that customers can go specifically to pick up. They're also deploying robots out there in hotels, around town, and hospitals to deliver medications and to deliver food, which is obviously a great way so you don't have to worry about having that human to human contact and, and spreading the virus. Another way tech is helping is through online education. So obviously with them staying at home, that means schools are closed as well. So there are companies out there that are using technology to help bring education to the kids that are stuck at home. There are companies like New Oriental Group and VIP Kid, and there's even the company Yuku that are posting online classes for primary and secondary school kids so they can take their classes or just get education while they're at home. Gyms are also getting involved with this and that I think this is kind of interesting. I don't know if I would do that here. You know, if the gym's closed, the gym's closed for a reason and like, oh no, I can't work out. There's specific gyms out there that are using online education to do live fitness classes so that you can still get your workout even if you can't come to the gym. Another cool way that tech is helping citizens of one beat the coronavirus. The next one I'm sure everybody can get on board with, who doesn't want a movie staycation? And what I mean by that is there are companies out there that are trying to bring movies that are released in movie theaters into your home. The movies that they've done so far are Lost in Russia and Enter the Fat Dragon, and they've been released on various video platforms and apps. I mean, you don't need movies to survive, that's obviously a given, but I think it's great that they're trying to find ways to still lift people's spirits in a time that is dire and scary and, you know, just not, not good. Ironically enough, during this time, there have been tons and tons of people flocking to video games. There's a game called Game for Peace, which is a Chinese rebranded version of PUBG Mobile. Tons of people are playing that game. I'm sure you've seen the articles online about Plague Inc. Now this game's been around for a long time and it's basically you outliving a virus. You're causing a virus and you outlive it. And that game just took off after this, which, you know, ironically, I guess they thought, I mean, this is a real world scenario, but let's play this game and see the odds of surviving the outbreak. I guess that sounds so morbid, but they're also flocking to World of Warcraft. Like I said, it goes with the movies, Playing video games is a great escape and just get your mind off of what's really happening in the world, especially if you're in the area where all the problems are at. I don't know that playing Plague Inc. will give you any survival skills, but like I said, it's a great escape and it's a great you know morale booster when everything around you just does not seem to be going that great. So aside from helping people who are stuck at home find ways to use tech to help continue living their lives, tech is also helping prevent the virus. If there's devices out there, one called the, I'm probably gonna mispronounce it, the Vici or the VC. It's basically a robot with a screen for a head. A doctor can talk to a patient remotely through this device and they can even diagnose them, take their temperature, do some just basic functions. This device can help them treat more people and not have to worry about doctors getting sick with the virus. I was reading an article during my research about a doctor who was treating people and then he got himself sick. Doctors are just out there to help people and I know it's hard to watch people not being helped and then you yourself have to take care of yourself but you can't because you want to help others. So it's it's a 
to catch 22 and you know i'm glad that there's they're using ways tech specifically to help treat patients another thing that they're doing they have robots out there that are basically going through and and deep cleaning places where humans frequent so there's a device called germ falcon they've used them in hotels and airports and in hospitals they they go through and they basically their job is to kill the virus this is a pretty big device there's a couple companies out there that are using like uv lights to do it um, one even based out of san antonio i was never aware that these devices existed I didn't think the stuff was out there. So it's cool to know that not cool to say that there's a virus, but in the event like something this continues to happen or is happening again, there are people out there creating devices to help prevent this stuff from spreading. Now the last way tech is helping fight against the coronavirus, which I thought was kind of interesting and you wouldn't really think this was tech, but it's, it's really tech adjacent is social media. A lot of times on social media, people are just out there to spread fake news, misinform people, give incorrect information and just cause panic and worry. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's what platforms should be used for. There are people out there specifically in the region that's affected and in like in Hong Kong that are trying to use social media the right way and give people in the area the correct information they need to you know, survive. One of the people are using WhatsApp and they're using closed groups to deliver the correct information. So there's a group called Glow News Room and it's like I said, a closed chat group in WhatsApp and it basically gives informative links articles and infographs for the virus. I think they said the group is less than 100 people. If you really think about it, if you were to take if you were to take like where you work, let's say there's 40 50 people where you work and those people are spread about the area and they are your go-to sources for things. And you know that through these people you're not going to get bias, you're not going to get government interference, you're not going to get fake news, just legit articles and it's just a closed group that they can kind of network with each other and spread the word to people around them. That's the way to go. I know that's sad to say that it's such a small, small deal, but none of us are there, none of us know what's going on, you know, really going on. So I think this is great. I'm glad that people are trying to go against the grain and, and do the right thing and they're using tech to do it. Some of the same people that are using the WhatsApp, they've they've gone a little step further and they're trying to make a more global presence. So they're using a website that basically takes that information and makes it into a infographic website. An infograph is it's basically just a pictorial of the information that's going on. So it's like charts, numbers, just images, st stuff like that. Not just a full blown like article you have to read. The website that I came up with is the wuanvirus.com. I'll post a link down below and you can look at it and it basically just keeps a, a daily tally of the deaths that have, have happened because of the virus. They show a map of the regions that are affected and they even color code it to show the severity of the areas. They also give up-to-date information down below. So there's always updates posting as far as, you know, alerts, website links, stuff like that. So it's, it's very helpful and I'm glad that they're using tech in a way that can, you know, really benefit others when in a, in a time you, you need that. It's all about support guys, helping your fellow man and just making sure that we can survive survive this thing. So those are the ways that tech is helping fight the coronavirus. You would never think that that would be something you would say is, you know, how can tech help fight a virus? Some that's killing people. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know if you find other other ways that the citizens of China are using their, their tech or if you know other ways that people are using tech to, to fight the virus. I'd really curious to know. As always, subscribe to my channel. I'm on my road to a thousand subscribers. I would love that you subscribe and, and watch more videos. Give it a like, and I'll see you next time on The Mashup.